speculation. Uh, it talks about um, assigning a judge, and I'm wondering if that is going to be uh, relevant in the state. It, it well, talks about that if well, you... Let me, let, me, let me just ask you a real quick question. Where's the federal regulations come from? Well, but it, it's talking about where it gives you the uh, the common law courts. It talks about where, where, no, 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 no. where, where, do, where do the federal regulations come from? They came from uh, the legislature. No. All regulations come from the executive branch. Oh. They're all the regulatory agencies come from the Department of Justice, from that area, and from the, the President of the United States, from the executive branch. Right. Well, right. But it's telling it's telling those government officers how to handle right. their business, right? Right. It, right. It tells them, right. Exactly. It tells the government officers, right, not you and not me, but it tells them. Well, in that, it, it seems to reference uh, what we need to do to, um, the point is, I understand that those aren't supposed to apply to us, but nonetheless, it, it does, if, it does seem it would be beneficial to us if we, if we took some of that as advisory. Of course, it's beautiful. I mean, they did all the hard work for us. All I do is cut, copy, and paste. I said, not only is that my belief that this is how they should be appointed, but you can compare that with Federal Regulatory Code 1234 ABCDEFG subsection Q. That's fine. But that's how you write it. Not only is that my belief that this would be efficient and uh, beneficial for all parties concerned, but under federal regulation, blah, 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 you know, see exhibit A under federal da da da. You put it in a box. Like I did, I said, see this. And it's like, that way, it's not my <coughs> belief that we, that the federal code is perfect, but I believe we should operate this way, and not only is that my belief, you guys have a hell of a structure already in place. Well, hell, this is beautiful. It makes it saves me a lot of thinking. Ooh, no, that's uh, right. uh, are you familiar with Rule 72 where it talks about magistrate judges and it says that uh, within, if, if you don't file an objection within 14 days, then the district judge uh, or I guess if you do, they must set aside any part of the order that is clearly erroneous or contrary to law. Well, obviously I like orders because that's how I, like I try to tell people, that's how you can make any kind of, uh, any kind of compensation, claim for compensation. If somebody orders you to do something, you just say, oh lovely, I'd love to carry out that order, but it was going to take me X amount of time, X amount of travel, X amount of expenses, and I'll be more than glad to carry it out. You want me to, you order me to jail for one year? Well, I'm going to have to find somebody to take care of my phone. I'm going to have to find somebody to help take care of my family. I'm going to require, I don't know, I guess it's probably going to come out close to a million dollars a year. I'll be more than glad to go sit in a, in a box for you. But you're going to have to compensate me for me to carry out that order. I'll be more than glad to carry out the order. Well, this, mm -hmm. this, is, now, this is talking about non distinctive uh, matters, which of course, meaning that they're in fact in law. So when a pretrial matter not in law is referred to a magistrate judge, and the party may file an objection within 14 days, and then the district judge must uh, follow our objection, what we put into the record. The only way they could place an order on you is if you submit it to their jurisdiction. If you're not a subject to their jurisdiction and they try to place an order on you, that's when I'm saying well, you could go no, claim the equity. You, well, there's, no reason, there's no reason to object an order. There's no reason. What, what would be the purpose to object or object an order? Because either you are under their jurisdiction and under their authority, and then if they place an order on you, you carry it out. You can't claim compensation because they got jurisdiction over you, just like I did. When I submitted my lawsuit, I submitted. I I, I paid into the federal court. The federal court is not the United States District Court. It's not the District Court. It's a federal court. I paid monies to the federal court. I am now under the jurisdiction and under the authority of federal court. So, now, if the rendering of the order comes from federal court, you better believe I'm obligated to carry it out and not be allowed to seek compensation, you know, for the order because I pay into the court, so now I'm under its control and jurisdiction. But a federal court, the way I assign the federal court to be is the only orders that I will accept will be coming from a jury. Which is well, my right. I guess. I guess our our objection would be a counter complaint. Is what I is the way I think that. You know what I mean? No, you don't use a counter. You you're new to well, my show. 
but you never no, no, counted. I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, I know, I know, I knew better. I'm sorry. I knew better. Yeah. Even Dan can see if I'm counting and claims, and everybody can tell you that. Oh, hey, check this out. Planes. Rule 17 uh, says that the rule, this rule, and this is uh, procedure in an original action. It says this rule applies uh, only to an action invoking the court's original jurisdiction under Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States. The form of the pleading and motion subscribed is followed in respects, uh, in, in, in other respects, those rules may be taken as guides. Uh, the, that's, 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 the just, that's, what I, that's what I said to you earlier. When you first started saying that's exactly what I said. You not only said my belief, but you guys already built a roadmap. You already guided us how to get through this stuff. Not only this, do I think it's a magnificent idea, but you folks compare that with your ideas. You know what? We're basically in the same ballpark. Yes, and honestly, we're not that far apart in our way of beliefs. So thank God we're basically close. We're almost running on parallel tracks. You have just a little bit different way of looking at it than I do, but thank God we're almost almost identical in our beliefs. You're maintaining this position in your regulations. I have a belief because I'm a man. You can't have a belief because you're an agency. You're an agent. You're an officer. You can only maintain the position of something that somebody gave you, the directions that somebody gave you. Somebody told you what to do. Somebody gave you a guidebook. Somebody said that this is how you should proceed under Rule 17. So you're maintaining the position because they give you the driving directions and you must do it exactly the way they directed you to do it. I'm not directed. I'm a man. I have unlimited scope and authority. I could steer and self-govern myself any way I choose and wish as long as I don't cause harm to anybody else while I'm self-governing. As long as my steerage and steering doesn't cause, you know, plowing to somebody else's property and cause any damage, I can steer my body and self-govern myself any way I wish. I'm not directed, so I don't have to maintain a position. But I say once you pay, pay money into a court, into a jurisdiction, then they can steer you because then you establish the rules and you have to abide by their orders. You said play so the whole money. trick is jurisdiction. That's the whole trick. Jurisdiction just means control. How did they get control over you? And you never asked that freaking judge this. You know, I did this about a, for 10, 12, 15 hours, whatever I was doing with these folks down here in Indiana. I said, stop. Stop asking a guy in a black robe. He's not the one that you ask, how did you get jurisdiction? You look over to the right and say, how did you get jurisdiction of me? How do you claim that you control me? The guy in a black robe is just a referee. He doesn't have a freaking clue. What your problem is with the other guy? He just got there at nine o'clock in the morning. Boom! He just dumped his case in his lap, and he's supposed to be impartial. Doesn't know what the hell's going on between you two. And you walk into court and say, "Subject matter jurisdiction." He doesn't have jurisdiction on me. The judge is like, "Well, he says he does. So as far as I'm concerned, he does." Let's go. You got to put. You got to. You got to write to the other side and say, "Hey, how do you got jurisdiction over me?" And you definitely do it before you walk into the effing court. And then you got a response or a non-response from the other side. Said he refused to respond how he has jurisdiction over me, like Malik just did. Malik just wrote to the Secretary of State. And this is how Malik's letter from the Secretary of State. I read it, you guys can listen to this on the, on the replay of this thing. And it clearly says how they believe that they have jurisdiction and control over Malik. And that's all they have to do. You have to write to the other side, hey, how do you believe that I'm the petitioner in this case, or do you believe I'm the defendant in this case? How do you think that, how that, how do you think that occurred? Because I don't believe I'm neither a defendant nor uh, a petitioner. How did this happen? And they will write to you. And they'll say, this, this is how we got jurisdiction and control over you. So you don't wait till you get into court and tell the other guy to start talking. How did you get jurisdiction over me? The judge will say, um, why were you summoned to appear? Like 30 days ago. Is there some reason why you couldn't? Was well, this you lazy bastard? Two days after you were summoned? Is there some reason why you couldn't say to the guy, who are you? Why are you asking me all this silly stuff? Who am I to you? How am I a defendant in your case? How am I a petitioner? Just like Malik did. And they'll write back to you. Well, thank you for, they'll say thank you for your kind man, the question. And da 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 da. Yours very truly. I mean, how much nicer can that Secretary of State guy been than Malik? None. He's telling him how he has jurisdiction over him. You don't ask the guy in a black robe. That's the most retarded stuff I ever hear. Well, go to court and ask him, oh, the judge, how's he got something to do with murder? He's like, I don't talk to him, though. I don't know. But the prosecutor knows, but the judge doesn't have to tell you that. The judge says, you know how to run an F and letter? Your mama didn't teach you better? You you knew you were being summoned in by this guy and you didn't have the fucking brain big enough to fucking ask the guy, who the fuck are you? And who the hell am I to you and who am you to me? I don't know who the hell you are. Would you please explain yourself what I did wrong to you and how may I compensate you so I don't have to be dragged before the judge? 
So I'm not the petitioner, so I'm not the defendant. How do we clear this up? Like, nah, I'm gonna be a lazy schmuck and I'm just gonna wait 30 days until I appear and then I'm gonna give this guy a black rope and I'm gonna break his balls. That's the most ridiculous game strategy I ever heard you guys say. But that's all I ever hear on all these other guru shows. Welcome to the court, who is the judge? He's something very interesting. That's like, this is the most retarded strategy you ever heard. That's like, as far as I know, man, you know, it's like, jurisdiction exists. Have a nice day. Anything else? Let's continue. Because if you say, hey, look, I responded to this guy, this is this guy, then I responded back, and I responded back. I paid off the debt. There's no debt between the parties. There's no reason for this proceeding to proceed. There is no jurisdiction over this matter because the, the debt has been settled. Well, I have no idea who this guy is because he's got the wrong guy. And the judge will look at that stuff, then he'll say, oh, really? Then they'll say to the prosecutor, why didn't you dismiss your claim? Why didn't you dismiss your case yourself? This man clearly shows that you got the wrong guy. This guy clearly shows that the debt has been settled. Why are you still dragging this fucking matter into the public? Why? The judge will ask the other side, why are you doing it? I mean, all I hear is this stupid bullshit, man. You guys walk into the well, you approached the bank and say, I don't believe, Judge, you have the simple matter jurisdiction over my person and not the living, bleeding, and trust man of the social... Oh, Jesus, whoa, well, you people just stop. You guys sound like flipping morons. Who taught you guys this stuff? Maybe to me, I said, maybe, you know what, this is all misinformation from attorneys. Just so when you guys walk in the courtroom, you look like blooming idiots. Because that's the only thing I could figure out, because I never tell you people that. That's the most insane thing I've ever heard. I see the people on YouTube, I just laugh. I said, oh, he's going right to jail. <laughs> That's going to be a warrant off this guy. Oh, he's going to get contempt of court so fast. It's going to be kids. <laughs>